Well, do you have August a false roof? August a ahas more room a vein show live or imagine? A number of years ago, visiting the school, I was given a book called uh, Fishing and Thinking. The book was uh, compiled by Jeremy Paxman. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to read the book because I was afraid it would pose more questions than answers. <laughs> but fishing is uh, very important in peace processes. They found that out in South Africa when now two friends of mine who I've worked with in recent years, Cyril Ramaphosa, who was the chief negotiator for the African National Congress, and Nelson Mandela, who sadly has gone back into hospital today, and Rolf Meyer, who was the chief negotiator for the clerk. At a critical time in their peace process, the two of them went fishing. And of course, the rest is history. South Africa has moved on. Why is fishing important to me? Well, I took up fly fishing over 20 years ago. I have fished since I was eight years of age. A friend of mine, James E. Quinn, who's 20 years older than me and who's like a second father, taught me to fly fish on a football field. It takes a while to learn the action. He also gave me a book. He actually gave me two books written by a former member of the RAF, a man called Hugh Falkus. And those books are like the Bible of fishing to many of us who are interested in the life cycle of the Atlantic salmon or sea trout. And I read those, both those books from cover to cover, but one line stuck with me in the book. And that line said that when you go fly fishing or you go fishing for salmon, you really have to believe that you're going to catch a salmon. And this is not a tall tale. What I'm about to tell you is absolutely true. The very first time I went fishing for salmon, fly fishing for salmon, was to a Donegal River. And on the second cast, I caught an eight-pound salmon. And of course, I have been hooked for life as a result of that. A number of years later, I was walking through Kong in County Mayo with my wife, and this man came rushing over to me. His name was uh, James Mitchell. And uh, James Mitchell said that uh, he was originally, his family was originally from Uri, and he wanted me to uh, have a photograph with his wife. So she came over, and I asked him where they were from. He said that they lived in Cumbria. And I said, well, I have a book written by a man who uh, lived in Cumbria at a place called Craig Cottage, Hugh Falkus. She almost fell off the footpath when she said that, uh, well, do you know, she said, I'm a nurse, and Hugh Falkus died six weeks ago, and I nursed him till his death. Fishing is very, very important. Up until six years ago, I never had a conversation with Peter Robinson or Ian Paisley about anything, not even about the weather. But I did have conversations with people who knew Ian Paisley and Peter Robinson. I don't think that they knew that they were having conversations with me. One of them was also a fly fisherman. So you can see fishing is very, very important. You learn a lot, not just about fishing, but you learn a lot about what other people are thinking when you have these conversations. And so, the rest is history. We are very privileged to lead what is seen as one of the most successful, if not the most successful, peace process in the world today. Here in the place where we live, a lot of people take that for granted. In the big world out there where there are a lot of conflicts, people do not take that for granted. How do we know that? We know that because they come here 
from conflict situations all over the world to learn from our experiences. And we go there. I have colleagues who have been to conflict situations all over the world. I have two colleagues in particular who were in Havana in the last couple of weeks, very much part of the discussions between the Colombian government and those who militarily oppose uh, that government at the request of the uh, participating uh, negotiators. I've been to Sri Lanka, I've been to Baghdad, I've been to a forest in Finland with Cyril Ramaphosa and Ralph Meyer. And I know the interest that there is in the Irish peace process and the uh, desire of people to learn from our experiences. That's why Peter Robinson and I have decided that we will build on the site of the infamous uh, Maze Long Cash Prison, a peace building and conflict resolution center, which will be a monument to peace and a facility for people in conflict around the world to come to our part of the world and to also learn from experiences here. But even though we lead one of the most successful peace processes in the world, we're not there yet. As we have seen in the course of recent months, there are huge problems around the whole issue of identity. And that represents a real challenge for us who are in the leadership of this uh, peace process. I am quite comfortable with Peter Robinson's identity, his allegiance as to the United Kingdom. He is British. I have no difficulty with that at all. But my allegiance is to Ireland and to the peaceful and democratic reunification of this country. That can only happen by peaceful means. There's a mechanism in the agreements that we've made to deal with that. And so we have to abide by those agreements and we have to work the institutions which are about power sharing, which are about north, south, and east, west. And we, we have to tackle the next big problem that we face, and the next big problem is the whole issue of identity. I know a young man in Derry City, he's a friend of my wife's. He lives in the Craigan Estate. He's a Rangers supporter. He goes to the local pub and the matches are on, and he sits among the Celtic fans with his Ranger jersey on, and nobody blinks an eyelid. That's where we need to get to in regard to all of our identities. I absolutely respect the rights of unionists, absolutely respect the rights of those who wish to regard themselves as British. And all I ask in return is that they respect my Irishness. And that will be a big discussion between us over the course of the common period. One thing that we need to remember, we should never take this peace process for granted. The world does not take this peace process for granted. The world is looking on. We are a beacon of hope. And we have a huge responsibility to prosecute our peace process to the successful conclusion that I know it can be. I am an optimist. I am involved in this peace process because I believe change can happen. We have transformed the political situation here in the North, and indeed, that has affected, for the better, the whole of this island. We need to continue with that work, but most important of all, we need to do what I told those school, school children who gave me the book. We absolutely need to believe in ourselves. Gorda Mila, Mila Mayogov.